Hi, The Mud Broker here. This is a video I've been trying to get around to making for quite a while, and I finally got a start on it. Hopefully this will be more than one video, but if I try and make plans and actually say anything about it, they never happen. So, for right now, we'll just stick to the one video. The question is, can cast iron be repaired? Yeah, it can. You can weld it, or you can braze it, those are the two most common ways of fixing cast iron. I'm going to be using a wire feed welder to transplant a handle onto this square Wagner skillet that I'm going to take off of this Wagner 1891 skillet. I'm going to cut the handle off and I'm going to weld it on to the stub of that one. Now I chose this because A, the 1891 Wagners are fairly inexpensive. It's not a great loss to sacrifice one. And even after I cut the handle off, this will still be usable as a baking dish, something of that sort. I'd rather have a handle on this old square one than I would on this one. They're also a fairly good match. You can see that there's, hopefully, a little bit of an indentation, a little bit of a thumb rest in these. And there's the same sort of thing on here. It's a little bit different but I think the two of them will blend together fairly good and it should be a decent looking result when I'm done. The reason why cast iron is so difficult to repair is ductility. Ductility is the ability of a metal to stretch and be pulled into wire or just generally to stretch. Cast iron has a very low ductility and when you try and weld it as the molten metal in the weld cools and freezes it seems strange to say that something thousands of degrees is freezing, but it is. As it goes from liquid back to solid, it shrinks considerably and it stretches the metal around it. With cast iron, it can't stretch very much and it'll usually crack. Now, a solution for this is to use a high nickel alloy as a filler metal because the nickel alloy doesn't shrink nearly as much as ordinary steel would. The drawback is high nickel welding wire, high nickel electrodes for a stick welder are fairly expensive. So this isn't really a cheap uh, process. But at any rate, I'll get into a little bit more detail once we get towards the welding phase of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this handle off with a grinder and a cutoff wheel. I'm going to do a little bit of grinding on this because somebody rounded the end of that off, which I would have done too to try and make it into something usable. I'm going to square this up a little bit and we'll try and shape and trim these so that we get as good a joint as possible before we start welding. Got me a pair of safety glasses so I don't get steel in my eyes. Steel in your eyes isn't fun. I know this from experience. And I'll clamp this down so it doesn't go running off on me. I'll clamp this down and I'll cut it off fairly close to the side of the pan. All right. You should really have a guard on those, but I don't because the guards are always in the way. Now, set that aside, put this out of the way. Now we have a handle that's nowhere near a match. This will need a little trimming and grinding, but what I'm most concerned with at this stage is how it fits in the horizontal. I want to get these two lined up good and the bottom looks like it lines up pretty nice so that's nice. There's going to be a good bit of grinding and shaping on this once it's welded so I'm not super worried about making a perfect match right now. I just want to get it fairly close. I put my grinding wheel on and square this up, do a little shaping on this And we'll see how it works out.
Now I can trim a little bit off the end of this, which I'll do now. I'll just hold it down with my hand on the edge here. That's going to be a little better fit. Yeah. And I think what I'll end up doing is getting a profile here so you can see a little bit. You see the very edge of that thumb rest there kind of turns up. I'll probably grind that down a little bit flatter so it's a little bit closer. And uh, it'll have a little bit of that thumb rest but it won't be very pronounced when we're done. It'll pretty much blend into the handle. So, let me change my wheels. Put the grinding wheel on and do a little bit of grinding. Flatten that off some, and she'll fit on there pretty good now, I think. Now, if this had just, if this still had the original handle that had simply broken off, I wouldn't have ground anything at all. I would have just lined it up, held it together tight as I could, and tack welded everything. But we'll get more into that once we get to the welding phase of our video. That looks like it'll line up pretty good. I'm going to stop the camera now, set up to weld, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my welder set up. You're going to want to have a piece of scrap, cast iron, to get your machine set up before you start welding on the thing you're intending to weld on. What I'm using for this is a nickel 55 flux cord wire. That means it's 55% nickel, the rest is iron and a little bit of other things, and it has a flux core. That means I don't need a separate shielding gas for my MIG welder. Flux core has a couple of advantages. Like I said, you don't need a tank of gas to drag around with you. It's more portable. It costs about the same as solid wire does, but the disadvantage is you get a lot more splatter. The core of the wire vaporizes, produces a blanket of gas which protects the weld from oxygen. The problem is that's happening right in the middle of your welding puddle. And it tends to splatter around a bit more and there's more of a chance of getting porosity in your weld and you don't want a porous weld. But it does work fairly good and on something thick like this it's much less of a problem. Later on, hopefully, I'll be able to do a video with a solid core wire using shielding gas. You get a lot smoother result and you can work with a lot thinner stuff. This is fairly thick and heavy. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tack weld the handle onto the uh, skillet. Just just put a few little spots of weld to hold it on there for the time being. Those will get ground off so they don't really have to be perfect. And I'm not going to preheat this yet. It's a lot easier to weld small things like this in cast iron if you preheat the iron first. We'll touch on that a little bit later, but for right now it's a lot easier to handle when it's cold. And I'll go ahead and tack this up. Problem is I don't think my old camera is really up to showing you the actual welding, the light might be a little too intense for it. It's nowhere near as intense as it would be with a stick welder, but all the same, I'm going to probably stop my camera for a second and then I'll tack this up and we'll be right back. Turn my welder off so we can hear. Okay, I've tacked this up. Get a little 
closer so you can see. A couple little spots of weld on four sides. One on top, one on bottom, one on each side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grind out where this weld is. And I'm going to grind it almost halfway through the handle. Then I'm going to preheat this to about 400 degrees. I got my torch around here and my other thing. So I'll take my welding hood off and we'll grind that quick. If it's going to crack on you with your weld, it'll usually crack fairly soon. Shortly after it cools down from being red hot, you'll hear it go tink if it's going to crack. This is fairly well stuck on there. I didn't hear any cracking, but it wouldn't really matter because, like I said, all of these tack welds will get ground out and ground away. So, let me grind this up. And I forgot to close the uh, lid cover, the lens cover on my camera. So I think I might be able to just go ahead and show you this welding. We'll see. See, there's a little bit of a hopefully you can see that a little bit of a spot right there where I got kind of a bit of weld sticking out. I'm going to grind that out a little bit, but we're just about done with that. Another thing with this high nickel wire is it has a high deposition rate. That means it fills in quite a bit as you weld. So, it should only take one, maybe two passes on this to fill that crack that we just ground into it. Let me put my gloves and hood back on and we'll weld that up. And hopefully I won't fry my camera in the process. Oh. I gotta preheat that. Can't weld it yet. Now with the preheating on something like this, I shouldn't have to preheat the entire piece. On some of our future videos I will, but for doing this I should be able to get away with heating this area here, the handle, up to about 400 degrees and the rest of it should be okay. So let me get my torch and my thermometer. We're up to about 350. Okay. Put my hood on. Hook up my ground, turn the welder on, and we're off.
So far so good. I haven't heard any cracking, which is a very positive sign. What I should have done before I started welding was take off my safety glasses and put on my reading glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, this has got a little bit, it didn't get quite all the way to the top of the grind mark. Something for a pointer here. That. Right along this top edge here, that's going to need another little bead to fill that in. So, I'll put my safety glasses back on. I'll grind this clean and I'll lay another bead down. Stop. Alright. Switch glasses again. Get a little shady out here. Once I get this welded, I'll be done for the day. There'll be quite a fair bit of grinding to do on it, and I'll be back to show you some of that probably tomorrow. But for right now, check my temperature. Needs a little bit more heat. side should be done. breaking, that's always a good sign. Now, look pretty good there. I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to cut down on that side, switch my glasses, Get this side shaped up and cut down, and then go ahead and weld that. Now it's hard to see, probably impossible to see on camera, but there's a very slight difference in color between the weld material and the cast iron. Now I've cut this down to where I'm just getting into the weld coming through from the other side. 
That'd take a little bit extra to get that tack weld out of there. But I now can weld up this side of it and we'll have the handle attached. I'll have to check my temperature again. Well, she cooled off a little bit. We're plenty hot now. So Up my ground and weld away. Gonna have to grind a little bit out on this side over here, this side here, and fill that back in. Let it cool off just a bit more. still be hot enough. Yeah. So, nice. Let that cool off a little bit and all should be well. Not quite well. I'm going to have to take a little bit off here, grind that down some, and fill that in. Because I didn't quite get to it. I stopped a little bit short there and it left a spot that needed a little bit more welding on it, but that's pretty easy to fix. Okay, we're hot enough. Well, there's a great excess of weld on there, so we should be good. Let that cool off a little bit. Now, like I said, flux core welding is a bit more violent 
than uh, using a solid core wire with a shielding gas. So you can see it's a bit more splattery, it's a bit more, well it's a bit more violent like I said because there's a lot of stuff going on right where you're trying to weld. But it sounds good and solid. It doesn't have a, has a good ring to it. I can't pick it up and tap it yet but I'm pretty sure that I've got everything where I want it for right now. And like I said, there's a good bit of weld that kind of dribbled over the side there. You can see that sticking up. But that'll all get ground down and blended in. I've got the handle on pretty straight. Looks pretty good so far. Once I get this get this uh, ground down, I'll show you that later because like I said, it's getting a little dark to film out here. Well, maybe not. We'll see what happens here. It's going to take a while because nickel is a pretty hard metal and I want to get that ground down good and smooth and I might find something once I uh, start grinding on it that needs to be filled in a little more and we'll see if there's any real porosity to it. Like I said, porosity is a bit of, more of a problem with flux core wi wire because like I said it's evaporating right in the middle of your puddle and it's kind of splashing things around but it shouldn't shouldn't be too bad. Still pretty warm. Let it cool off and uh, I'll come back in a bit if I still got enough daylight. Hopefully this is coming out halfway decent and uh, might do a little grinding on it yet tonight. This is still fairly warm but it isn't terribly hot so I'm going to do a little bit of grinding on this and try and get at least a little bit of rough shaping done on it before I call it a day. Now I'm sure there are some things I wanted to mention while I was about the welding process and since I'm going to do this over a couple of days hopefully I'll remember those at some point and work them into the video. But for right now I'm just going to rough grind this and uh, get it shaped up so I can see where I am See if there's any spots that need a little bit more weld added to them and we'll be in pretty good shape for the next phase. Alright, there's that side kind of roughed in. The main thing I wanted to do was find the edges of my welds and make sure that there wasn't any undercutting. There's a couple little tiny spots that I can see, but I got some more grinding to do there. Other than that, looks pretty good so far. Might, well, that's still pretty high right there, so that little notch there will probably grind out once I get it shaped down. I'm going to do the other side, but for now, I'm going to call it a day, and I'll be back tomorrow. Got to make my table a little more stable before I go any farther. And uh, like I said, hopefully I'll remember everything I wanted to say by the next time I start filming. Try a little different camera angle here, see if we can see any better. Last night I welded the handle on, and I did a little rough grinding on this just to kind of get things knocked down. Now I have to do a little final shaping on it. There's, get on camera here, there's a kind of a flattened ridge that runs along the edge of the pan and I want to try and preserve that. It's pretty good on this side. It's a little bit flat on this side but there's quite a bit of grinding that needs to be done. I want to try and carry that sort of ridge all the way through. Round the bottom off a little bit. It needs to be narrowed up a little bit right in through here so I have to blend these in a little better and there's still a bit of a hump on the top here where the weld was so I'll grind this down and once I get it ground down I'll have to get the grinding marks out of it so without any more ado I will clamp this down 
and start grinding. Come on, you. There you go. Okay, that's not too bad. This spot on the bottom, I kind of forgot about. On the original handle there was a groove that ran through the bottom and if I would have thought about it at the time I would have filled that in with a weld but I should be able to just make that into a little dimple so it doesn't look too bad but we got that shaped fairly good once I get the top shaped down a little bit more I'll know better and uh, I can make adjustments as I go. Too bad. I've upset the sandhill cranes apparently. But I still need to get a little bit off of this edge. A little bit off of this edge. Gotta move that just a little bit so Okay, my line on the side looks pretty good. I think it might take just a little bit more on the bottom. I'd say we're looking pretty good. What I'm going to do now is try and get some of these grinder marks off of here. It's fairly rounded up and for that I'm going to use a sanding disc. Flap wheel, tiger disc, there's a lot of different names for them. But I have a couple of different grits. I have a 60 and a 120. I'll try that 60 grit first and see how that does. And I should be able to get all the grinder marks out of there and get that down pretty smooth.
so far so good. Now these sanding discs aren't nearly as aggressive as a grinding wheel, but you do have to be careful with them because they do remove some metal. I'll switch to my finer disc and we'll see how the scratches look when we're done. That is looking really, really nice. I'm going to go in and get a little bit of uh, emery cloth and sand this by hand. Just get the last of the scratches out. But we are just about done with this pan. I'll be back in a second. Got a little 150 grit emery cloth. And I'll just go over this and see if I can get the last of those sanding scratches out of it. I'd say that's good enough for now. Yeah, let me flip it over. Get the back side. I'm happy with that. For all practical purposes, we're done with the welding and shaping on this, but there's one more thing I'm going to do, but I can't do it here. I'm going to sandblast this lightly. It'll give it a little bit of texture and take away the super smooth polished look and make it look a little bit more like the surrounding area. It won't be a perfect match, but it will help to blend this weld area in a little bit better than it does right now. I'm really happy with the shape of that. The line came out good on both sides. It's nice and even. Yeah, as even as any other handle you're ever going to see. So, once I get this blasted, I'll finish scrubbing it up, season it, and then I'll come back and I'll do a little bit of a wind up to this video. Here we are a bit later. Like I said, I've sandblasted this lightly because I wanted to get rid of some of that. I want to give it a little bit of texture. I didn't want it, you know, the smooth, polished look. It's purely cosmetic. It's not something you have to do as part of the process. And in this light, hopefully you can see a little bit better. The weld material is a little bit different color than the iron around it. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out does have a couple of minor flaws. It must have pulled a little bit when I tacked it up because the handle is ever so slightly out of line this way. And I think it shrank a little bit more on one tack than the other and kind of pulled things out of line. But it's barely noticeable. And I did get a little spot of porosity there. Looks like it's pretty, pretty minor. I think it was one of the welds that I went in over the top to uh, to fill in a low spot. But, apart from those, the line, I managed to keep that really nice. The line looks pretty good down the side. And it's good and solid. Anyway, I'm going to give this a little bit of seasoning, see what it ends up looking like, and we'll wrap this video up then. Okay, here we have the finished product. Got a few coats of seasoning on there. And uh, this is what it turned out like. Like I said before, you can see a difference in the color in the between the weld and the original metal. You can really see it now that it's been seasoned. But overall, I am quite happy with the way it turned out. You know, the texture isn't quite right where I sandblasted it after I had ground and sanded and shaped it. But it doesn't have a really you know, bright polished look to it, and it blends in pretty good. 
you can, like I said, you can definitely tell the difference in the weld material. That'll probably darken some with use, but you know, more than likely you're always going to have a bit of a light spot there. Now I'm not a professional welder. I'm not even really all that great of a welder. And cast iron is notoriously difficult to weld. But it can be done. Question is, should it be done? The materials for welding cast iron are quite a bit more expensive than just for welding steel. A two pound roll of steel welding wire will cost you 25, 30 bucks. A two pound roll of nickel 55 welding wire for welding cast iron will cost you about 90. And the same applies to uh, electrodes if you're going to try stick welding. So it's going to be quite a bit more expensive and it takes a little time and effort to do it. Take some practice. We'll give you talk to you about that in a little bit. But you know, is it really worth doing? If you have the ability to weld and the equipment, yeah, it can be. But something like this, it's always going to be a damaged and repaired skillet. It's not going to have the value that an unbroken skillet would have had. But if you have something that has a huge sentimental value, your idiot nephew snapped the handle off your great grandma's favorite skillet that's been in the family forever, it can be repaired. And it can be repaired fairly decently. I mean, that's not an unpleasant looking repair. Anyway, you know, if you have to pay somebody to do it, it's going to cost quite a bit more again. But for sentimental reasons, yes, it would be worthwhile. Commercially, you're not going to be able to take a bunch of broken pans, weld them up, and sell them at a profit. You know, it's just too expensive to do it. And like I said, especially if you have to have a welding shop or somebody else do it. Doing it yourself, you certainly can. Get yourself, you know, a junk piece of iron like this, a fajita pan. Break it, weld it back together. You can use it to lay some practice beads on while you're trying to get your welder set up. Preheating it is pretty much critical with something like this. It's not quite as important to get the whole thing heated up when you're welding on a heavier, thicker area like a handle, but to weld a crack on the side of the pan or out in the field, you're definitely going to need to preheat the entire pan. There are techniques where you don't have to preheat it, but they're for things that are nothing like what we're going to be doing with this. I'm hoping to do some more videos on welding and repairing cast iron. And, uh, I, you know, a little bit of luck, I'll be able to get them out faster than what I got this one out. But there you have it. You can weld cast iron. Take some doing, takes a bit of practice. You're definitely going to want to practice on some junk iron and get your, uh, get your skills worked out and figured out how you want to do it. But it can be done and it can be worthwhile if it's something that you can do. If you already have the machinery you're set up for welding, you can go ahead and uh, weld up some old cast iron and make something that was otherwise useless into a usable piece of cast iron again. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little bit. I'm not the greatest welding teacher around because I'm not the greatest welder. And I'm not really set up for filming welding and that sort of thing. But with a little bit of skill, a little bit of investment, you can in fact do this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later.